You are listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. I'm your host, Adam Rosen. I'm a fellowship-trained, board-certified orthopedic surgeon who specializes in knee replacement. Here I'll talk to you about common knee complaints and other orthopedic issues. We'll cover other important health-related topics, all of which are meant to helpfully answer some of your questions and help improve the quality of your life. Thanks for listening, and on with the next episode. Hello and welcome back. This is Adam Rosen and you're listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about a very common question that I get asked is, can I use the stairs? Or how long do I have to stay downstairs after my surgery because I have stairs to get to my bedroom? So I'm going to talk to you a bunch about that. And um, if you have stairs, the simple answer is use them. Now, understand When I meet people that have severe knee arthritis, they're already having pain. They may have some restricted range of motion. They may limp. They may have some weakness. They may have some instability. And if they live in a house and they have stairs, they're still going up and down the stairs. And if they use the stairs and they have pain or symptoms from their knee arthritis, they're taking the stairs slowly. They may be taking it one step at a time where they put their right foot up and then bring their left foot up to the same step and then take the next step up again. And they're typically holding on to the railing. um, And they've learned to do that because their knee is painful or sore or weak. Now, after surgery, when you go home, your knee will be sore and you may feel weak. Your knee should be stable. Um, And for some people, the knee replacement may actually be functionally better than the arthritic knee that they've been living with. You know, so I try to tell people is when you go home, use the stairs. It's one of the things that we do in therapy in the hospital is making sure that people understand how to go up and down the stairs and making sure that they can use them and navigate them normally. But there's always the fear. You know, people always have this fear in the back of their mind as to, well, what if I fall and what if I hurt myself and what if I break my leg and what if I, you know, knock myself on the head or, you know, I have to call 911 and they're all real concerns. They are. Um, But what I always explain to people too is, you know, over the years I've taken care of a lot of people that have fallen and they have broken things at home. To be honest, rarely they're on the stairs. The most dangerous place in the house typically is in the bathroom, in the shower or the tub where it's slippery and wet. But occasionally people do fall down the stairs. Uh, And typically these are people that didn't have any arthritis. They didn't have any problems. They didn't have any issues. They were just simply walking. More commonly you see someone tripped or fell or actually nowadays more often someone says, I was looking at my phone. You know, I know I shouldn't have and I fell. So if you injure yourself at home, it is very likely that your odds are probably more in favor of hurting yourself normally every day than it is after surgery. Why? Because after surgery, people are extremely cautious because people are afraid of injuring their knee. So you take the steps even more slowly and more cautiously, and you'll use the railing and you'll hold on, maybe have a walker or cane with you, but you can do it. You know, there's no reason not to do stairs. Now, if you don't do stairs, you're actually avoiding a potential therapy. You know, we actually do bend the knee and you get some muscle strength by using the stairs. So I always kind of explain to people, even after we've had these discussions, if their progress is a little slower than some, um, and you kind of dig a little deeper into what they're doing and how they're doing and how they're living and, you know, what their symptoms are like, Lo and behold, the majority of these people that are slow to progress in the early phases of recovery are living on their sofa downstairs, and maybe they have a spare bedroom downstairs. And it's that avoidance of the stairs and that limitation in the number of steps in their activity that actually has a huge impact on their recovery. So by using the stairs, you're actually improving your range of motion and you're improving your strength. So it's not that you have to do laps on the stairs. And obviously after surgery, if you're sore, it's not the time to carry a laundry basket up and down the stairs. You need to work about getting yourself up and down the stairs. And if you have the luxury of a significant other at home with you, it's great to have them, you know, near you 
if it's safe for them to be in that position, just to help you if needed, especially in the beginning. But using the stairs is okay, um, especially if you've been doing stairs prior. It's very different if someone hasn't been able to use stairs for a couple months due to disability and weakness. That person's unique, and it may take that person a little while longer to get the strength back to safely navigate the stairs. But for all other individuals that were using the stairs prior to surgery, not only is it okay for them to use the stairs after surgery, but in a lot of ways, it's actually beneficial. But yes, accidents do happen, so you need to be careful and you need to be cautious. Now, in relation to the stairs, but in relation to just ambulation again, because a lot of people have a fear of leaving the hospital or the surgery center after knee surgery and going home, um, is that people commonly do get lightheaded or dizzy. We see this most frequently in the first 48 hours. You've had some type of anesthesia. You've had some amount of blood loss. You usually have some medications on board. You may have actually used some narcotics as well. And all of those things can lead to dizziness. So I always recommend to all of my patients, you know, number one is we're giving a lot of people non-narcotic medication to control pain, but also limit the side effects that come with narcotics. So that's number one is limit the narcotics that you take. Number two is make sure you're eating well, but staying well hydrated. Because if you get dehydrated, you're more likely to get lightheaded and dizzy due to low blood pressure when you stand up. But also most importantly, in the first especially two days or three days when people are at home is whenever you go to get up out of bed, out of a chair, or off the sofa. I always tell people, make it a habit to move around a little bit. You know, squeeze your arm muscles and leg muscles. Kind of get the muscles pumping and the blood pumping. And sit up if you've been lying down or lying back. Sit there 30 seconds or more. And then, if you're not lightheaded or dizzy, stand up. And then stay there. 30 seconds or more, because if you get dizzy in this position, you can easily sit back down. Because once you sit up, stay there, stand up, stay there, and you're not dizzy, then you can go and walk and do what you have to do. Because we don't want you to sit up, stand up, take five steps away from the chair, the sofa, or the bed, and now you're standing in the middle of the room and you're getting dizzy and you're about to black out. That's where you're going to fall and hurt yourself. So you need to be cautious. But getting up at home, is okay. Just make sure that you're cautious, especially the first two or three days. And again, using the stairs. If you were using them before surgery, it is completely fine to use them after surgery. But like any time, you need to be careful and you need to be cautious and you need to be aware of the situation and know your limits. But also, if you've worked with a therapist, they've also taught you specifically little tricks and tips on how to safely navigate the stairs with your good leg, with your bad leg, with a railing, with a walker or cane if you're using it. So I hope that maybe has answered some of the questions that, again, this is a question that I get as much as I talk about it and write about it and put it in the handouts. It is the most common question that I get in the preoperative assessment with patients is the big fear, the big anxiety producing event of when I go home, what am I going to do? I have stairs. This hopefully puts some of those questions that you may have to rest and put some of your fears um, at rest and gives you some information on what you should look for and what to think about when you go home and especially the little tips and tricks on it's very common to get lightheaded and dizzy so be cautious when you sit up or stand up at home in those first couple days. So until next time, you've been listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. I'm Adam Rosen. Stay safe. Thanks for listening to the Your Knee, Your Health podcast. If you've not already done so, please subscribe so you'll be notified of future episodes. And if you enjoy what you're hearing, please take the time to leave a review. It helps other people like you find the show. I'm your host, Adam Rosen, and until next time, stay safe.